So yeah, I put together a mini gaming PC using real Steam Deck hardware, and as you can see, it's working. What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be turning real Steam Deck hardware into a Steam Deck mini PC. What I've got in this box is actually a broken Steam Deck. Well, it's not all of the parts because the guy I bought it from has parted most of it out. But the most important thing that I personally need is here, and there it is, that's the motherboard along with the heat sink. We should also have the front half of the shell and the battery along with the broken LCD display. So this was actually a first gen LCD Steam Deck. It's not the 64 gig unit, it was a 512, so we don't have any onboard storage with that motherboard. That actually would have been pretty cool. And I do know the person I bought this from. I know you're watching this and I've got a hunch on what happened. I know exactly what you told me, but I think what happened here was you tried to swap the shell out with one of the extreme rate clear shells, broke the screen, really didn't feel like doing anything with it, started parting it out. I ended up giving them a hundred bucks and an Ambernick handheld for this unit here. Now there's not much to it, as you can see. I mean, we've got that front half of the shell, broken screen and the battery. But this is the most important part. We've got the motherboard for that LCD Steam Deck. With all of the parts that are missing right now from the Steam Deck, to me, it doesn't make much sense to rebuild it. So what I wanted to do here was take this motherboard and basically turn it into a mini PC. This is going to be kind of part one. I want to see if this is even possible. I don't know if this is even going to work, if it's going to boot up. If I can get this working without spending any extra money, I will consider making another video and building a nice little case, maybe a new heatsink. But right now, I wanted to keep this as cheap as possible. And all in, I've got about $142 into this unit, which is still pretty expensive for just parts on the table. So basically, with this Steam Deck motherboard, we do have access to USB Type-C. And remember, we can do video out of USB Type-C. Also have access to that M.2 slot and a micro SD card. So I can add extra storage here. So right around here, I've got that micro SD card slot our USB Type-C up here, and I do have an extra 2230 M.2 SSD that I pulled out of one of my Steam Decks when I upgraded the SSD. So that's what I'm gonna be using in here, but I wouldn't be opposed to using like a 2280 and something like this. Right now, I wanna come up with something just to kind of get it up off of the table, get everything secured. That way we can kind of set it right beside our monitor, get this thing booted up. And yeah, you could always 3D print a case for this thing. You could actually make something really nice. But I've got some Paylight laying around from another project I did a while ago. And basically what we've got here is an easy to cut plastic. It is pretty durable. And all I need to do is get this up off the table. I want to make sure that the fan is secure because right now it's actually just taped on to that copper heat sink hanging off the side. So I'll need a little mount for that. And it should be easy enough using this Paylight. Another thing I wanted to do was add just a little extra cooling while it's outside of the case. We could go ahead and add that to the top of the shield itself. It's got double-sided thermal tape on the back of it already. I picked up a bunch of these a while ago on Amazon. And of course, we need some storage. Like I mentioned, I've got this 512 gigabyte 2230 that I pulled out of my original Steam Deck. And this is what I've come up with. Definitely easy enough. Got it raised up. We've got that fan secure. This thing's not going to go anywhere. And again, you know, if this does work out, I wouldn't mind making a really nice case for it. Maybe even putting one of the uh, Raspberry Pi tower coolers on it. But right now, we're going to leave it just like this. I've got the shield that'll go right on top. And everything is mounted down with screws to that pay light. Now, I'm not sure how much heat this is going to pull out, but we've got that aluminum heat sink in place now. And originally, I did want to go just as small as possible with it, but I couldn't find a heat sink that would work on top. We could mount it down without, you know, having to purchase anything extra right now. And the heat sink that's on it, the stock heat sink, we can't just bend that copper tube up. It's not going to cool properly. So I think that this is going to be my best bet right now, keeping the cost as low as possible. But there is one other thing we need here. Obviously, we've only got one USB Type-C here. We'll do power in, video out, and it will transfer data. So what I've opted to use here is this 65 watt charger that also has HDMI and two USB ports. So basically, USB Type-C to the charger, it's going to give us power to the board itself. We've got HDMI out to our larger monitor and two USB ports so we could plug keyboard and mouse in if we need to. We could do this with a USB Type-C adapter, have more I.O. if we wanted to, but I think this is super clean. It's just plugged into the wall and we need this single cable going to the board itself. And in turn, it's going to send power over to the board and HDMI out to the monitor. The LED indicator on the Steam Deck board is on, but the fan isn't spinning up, so I'm not sure if it's on yet. I can reach the power button right here just to make sure. Okay, the fan is spinning. And it just ramped up to, I mean, I'd say maybe 100%. 
don't know if it's doing anything. I'm going to let it sit for a second because that LED indicator is still on. There it is. So yeah. Okay, cool. Looks like it's booting up. And yeah, that fan is spinning up there. Just heard it kind of come back down a little bit. Kind of normal operation. I guess it was just in kind of a boot mode. Not exactly sure why it went to 100%, but oh man, okay. Let me see. I don't know. There it is. Okay, sweet. I actually thought that I'd have to reflash this uh, SSD here. I'm sure the operating system needs to be updated, but keyboard is working. And another thing I plugged into the free USB port on that wall adapter was this controller, just so I had controller functionality. I didn't plug in any antennas for that Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. It might work like it is, but Wi-Fi is showing like one bar right now. Now, what I want to do is just make sure everything's up to date. Definitely want to install some games here. So just give me a second. Okay, so the BIOS on this did need to be updated, but I ran into an issue because there was no battery plugged in. And from the Steam Deck itself, it's telling me I couldn't update because you need at least 20% battery. So what I did was take the front half of the shell, plug the battery in and updated from there. But I did some research online and it looks like there's a Steam Deck BIOS manager over on GitHub. Now I haven't tried it without a battery or anything like that. I just went with the, uh, you know, the official update, but there's probably a way to do it. So far, it's been working pretty well, but I did run into one small issue and it hasn't reoccurred just yet. A couple minutes into gameplay, the whole system shut down on me and it just rebooted itself. I'm not sure if I lost power from the power supply or what happened, but I was able to get back into the game and record some footage. It was just a bit odd, only time that it's happened and I've tested a few games here. Real quick, I wanna show you, if we put our on-screen overlay on, you can see that our battery says NAN. Knows we're plugged in, and I figured it wouldn't even show up here since we don't have a battery plugged in. I doubt many people are going to be doing this, but that's just something to note there. Uh, I really haven't looked into any way of, you know, getting rid of it or not. And we could run something like Bazai on this, but I've got a stock Steam Deck image on this unit right now. If I open up our settings, we'll go to display. And right now I'm at 1080, 120 hertz. But if I had this plugged into, let's say, a 4K monitor, we could definitely go up to 4K with it. I'm just going to leave it right here at 1080. I know what kind of performance the Steam Deck puts out. Another thing I've added here is something I personally always like to do, and that's our CSS loader. So we can actually set this up to uh, look basically however we want it to look. And I think, yeah, there we go. So we've got a totally different look. And I do think that this works really well for, you know, large screen experience. So that's what we're going to be doing on this. We don't have a screen plugged into it. And we could always get to the desktop side of things if we really wanted to. But I wanted to get into a little bit of gameplay here. And we're going to start out with Cyberpunk 2077. And one thing I've noticed here is sometimes it still defaults to uh, a lower resolution. So I'm going to be running this game at 900p instead of 800p. Usually I set this to 1080 and I can go down inside of the game itself. I'm just going to go 1600 by 900. And we'll see how this thing performs. Okay, so here's Cyberpunk 2077. And instead of using the Steam Deck preset, I'm actually at low with FSR set to balance, but I'm at 900p right now. And I do think we could get a little more out of this if we went to all low settings through the drop downs and take FSR to performance instead of balance. But then we really degrade that picture quality. Of course, going into this, I knew we weren't going to be able to do everything at 1080p. We've still got Steam Deck hardware, no matter what you do to it. But going into this at 900p on this larger display isn't all that bad. Here's Hades 2, definitely a lot easier to run than Cyberpunk. We're at 1080p, high settings, 120 hertz, and it does look like it's kind of fluctuating a bit. One thing I usually do with this game on the Steam Deck, at least the built-in screen, is lock the TDP. And if I did that, I'm sure we could probably get a steady 120 out of this game. Might have to drop it down to medium, but it's definitely playable like this and feels really good. Here's Forza Horizon 5, 900p, medium settings, with some FSR, we're actually set to balance. 
Originally, going into this, I thought we'd be able to do 1080 medium or even with a low medium mix here. But without a bunch of FSR, it's just not going to go over 60 at 1080. So 900p is a nice sweet spot here. And we're well over 60 FPS. In fact, I did play out for a little while here. Never dropped under 60 and it's pretty decent. Another thing we could always do here is just lock it right down at 60 and take those settings up until we start kind of falling under. So it'll really come down to finding the balance of settings and resolution. And the final one we have here is Spider-Man Remastered. And ever since we got the FSR 3.1 with frame gen update to this game from Nixus, it's run really well on the Steam Deck. I didn't think we'd have an issue here and we're still at 900p, but we've got medium settings right now with frame gen on. So in the end, I suspect there's not a lot of people out there that are going to do this, but you know, if you do run into a pretty decent deal on a really busted up Steam Deck, this is definitely something you could do. And given that this did work out, I will be going with version 2, so definitely keep an eye on the channel. Just need to wait on a few more parts. I don't mind spending a little more on this now that I know it will function correctly. And uh, you know, if you're interested in something like that, make sure you hit that like button. Think about subscribing to the channel. The main thing I want to do here is get a nice little case and probably a different cooling system. That way we can go a bit smaller form factor. We don't have that uh, blower style fan hanging off the side. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you've got any questions, let me know down below. And like always, thanks for watching.